One man, one murloc, one giant angry badger. This is Blue Please. It begins now. indeed folks welcome 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 to blue please on wow radio for the 22nd of january 2010 my name is total biscuit i shall be your host for the next 90 minutes of me 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 and possibly more me it's to be expected it's what the show's all about if you don't like it go elsewhere find another show you'll not find one of this caliber that i can guarantee what yes you go this is your second class shows hmm what are we going to come in for you in the show today? Well, Blizz decided, against their better judgment, to do another Twitter Q&A. Develop a chat. Lots of content. We're going to be going through the entire thing today. Point by point. It's going to be the entire show. Give or take. It makes sense, to be honest. Very little has happened this week. So, hey, new bosses got released, and the new bosses were buggy. There's a shocker. You could accidentally pull the Blood Queen in a variety of different amusing ways while fighting the Council of Blood Princes below. Some great testing there. Possibly a little bit of an issue there with their testing method, I feel. Allowing you to test one boss in isolation doesn't quite prepare you for that issue, does it? Yes, I was talking to Dave, also known as Fear the Flames, one of our community members. He was telling me they managed to pull the Blood Queen by bouncing the, I believe it was the f fire orb, the flame orb, through the roof, which caused the Blood Queen to aggro and run all the way down to them and kill them. Oh, God. It does make you wonder why such things can actually happen, <laughs> honestly. It has now been hotfixed, thankfully. Apparently, the Blood Queen no longer even spawns until you've killed the Blood Princess, which would have been a sensible thing to do to begin with, let's be honest. Why bother spawning her anyway? Surely she's an end of wing boss, so, eh, whatever. But yeah, Twitter chat, lots of information there. Gonna be going through point by point deconstructing later on in the show. But, you may influence it. This is a democracy, in the lying sense of the word. You can send in your suggestions for the last hope of the show. It's the illusion of choice. Email themurloc at gmail.com. That is the murloc at gmail.com. That will be the address for the next couple of weeks. It will be changing. The times, they are a changing. And I'm not going to tell you what to yet. It will be a surprise. I'll come up with something, no doubt. It'll be nice. It'll be more professional. No doubt you guys will typo it, even more so than this one. <sighs> Hopeless. Well, I am happy to say one thing, at least. Those of you who've been keeping track of the progress of the guild have been aware of the last couple of weeks that we have been able to do absolutely nothing. Our paladin healer decided to go AWOL for no good reason and won't talk to any of us on Steam or anything. That's always nice. At the height of passive-aggressive there. I don't know, maybe there's a legitimate issue there, but if you're going to be online on Steam, one would assume that you might be able to spare 20 seconds of your very important time to tell us, hey, I'm not raiding with you anymore. But we have a replacement. He's on his way over right now. I'm going to restart raiding on Saturday, and a good job, really, because we're well behind as a direct result of that nonsense. Got an entire wing to clear before we get to kill the new bosses. That's kind of cool. It's nice to have quite a lot of content ahead of me. We shall see. And I must say, I'm also... Approving of what appears to be an accelerated drip feed of the bosses. We're going to be facing the Lich King in two weeks now. So that actually makes me wonder as to why they spent so long drip feeding the content. Like, that's not going to extend the subscriber base by that long. I suppose maybe a month or two, but really. It does make me wonder if the encounters near the end were so bugged and perhaps even not finished. Oh well. We shall probably never know. <sighs> never mind. Ladies and gents, children of all ages, if you are not already in the IRC channel and you are listening live, irc.quaknet.org, hash or pound WC radio. Also setting up the new channel for the new site, hash or pound cynical Brit on the same network. Feel free to join there and loaf around until we get the Q bot and all the good stuff in there. 
Uh, I'd also like to say a hearty congratulations, even though I don't get along with them anymore, to the one and only Cadwallion, ex-webmaster and host of Why Things Considered, who is now a father. Although his decision to broadcast the entire birth on the internet was a little suspect. Oh well, no judgments to be made there. And by the looks of it, enough people have done that already. Congratulations, nonetheless. Ladies and gents, it is time for this. No, it isn't. It's not working. Ah, oh, I forgot to fix it. The mail time drop-in. Why? Why? Where the hell did it go, anyway? I do wonder. Anyway, mail time. Whatever, let's get on with it. No point wasting time with that. Got quite a few emails, to be honest. It's going to take a while to get through these. Might have two email segments. Shocking. Let's see. This one is from Ezreal from Holland, and he says this. Hey, TB. I was wondering what your opinion is regarding the two situations that happened during a TOC and VOA raid that was in. In the first situation, I was in TOC 25 Pug, well that was asking for trouble, when we killed twins and Death's Verdict dropped. Rolling ensued and a warrior from my guild won it. Right after he receives the trinket, he asked in guild chat, does anyone want to buy it? A small bidding war follows and eventually a DK from our guild that was present during the kill ends up buying the trinket from him. What do you think of this? The warrior had the right to roll on the trinket since he was there as DPS, and it was, in fact, an awesome DPS trinket. However, does that also give him the right to just sell it to whoever he wants? Yeah, actually, it does, as far as I'm concerned. He had the right to roll on it. He was in a pug group. So, what's the problem? I don't see any issues with that, honestly. It seems perfectly reasonable. It's not like, say, he was... A mage rolling on it. He could have used it. He didn't. He decided to sell it to a DK from the guild who was there at the, you know, the point of the kill. I'm okay with that. I think that's entirely reasonable. I don't see the problem with it, honestly. At the end of the day, if you're in the group, you have equal loot rights. If it's a pug and there is no prearranged system whereby something has been reserved or where there are different loot rules put in place before you join, then why not? If they are there, then yes, you're damn right it's unethical. So, yeah. Otherwise, it's fine. At the end of the day, pugs are always going to be a little bit loose with the rules. Because that's just the way of it. It's not a guild. You can't prioritize and say, oh, well, you have this because you need it more than me. Or, oh, I've got more DKP than you. Or, I'm higher on the Suicide Kings list. You don't get that. In a pug, as far as I'm concerned, things are fair game if you can use it. I don't see the issue with it. At all. But there you go. That's just my personal opinion. The idea of pug morality is a rather nebulous one at best. Now, the second situation happened in a VOA 25 pug. We kill Coralan and some PvP neckpiece drops. A DK in my guild really wants it but ends up losing the roll. Right before it gets passed to the winner, someone else from my guild rolls on it and ends up winning the neckpiece. He then proceeds to trade the neckpiece to the DK, since the only reason he rolled was to give the DK another chance of a winning roll. Is this cool or is this just being a douchebag? That's actually pretty douchey, honestly. It's the difference between can you use it and can you not use it. If you just rolled on it, knowing full well that you wouldn't use it, and just denied someone else, then yeah, I guess that is a douchey thing. But then again, how do you compare that to the first situation? It's a pretty difficult call. Would that thing have been any use? You know, there's Death's Verdict Trinket, I'm not familiar with it. Would it have been any use to that warrior? Would that warrior have used it? Because if so, and it would have been an upgrade, but he decided to sell it instead, then that's his prerogative. That's fine. But with the other case, where he can't use it, and he's just rolling specifically to try and get it for somebody else, then yeah, that's a douchebag move. Because what you've done there is you've denied it to somebody else, who also rolled on it and actually needed it. So yeah. I would call that douchey, personally. I would. That's the difference between the two. That's the barrier, rather small barrier, but the barrier nonetheless, the line in the sand between ethical and unethical. But there are ways and means to view it in terms of, hey, I was in the group, I get equal loot rights. Technically you do, it's certainly within the rules, but it's a bit it's pretty douchey, let's be honest. Now, I also wanted to share two quick, bad, five-man pug experiences with you. In the first one, I got a UK on my rogue with only one boss still up. I thought I'd just hit the jackpot and would get the easiest frost badges ever. Then all of a sudden, we wiped on trash. In UK, twice. What? How? 
Fortunately, I managed to vanish the second time, but I was still horrified. The other horror story just happened to my priest. I got Oculus. Right, well, that's a horror story in and of itself. You don't have to go any further. Anyway, he had to hi fight his way through players leaving, going AFK, going off flying, and DPS pulling the final boss while someone was switching to a Ruby Dragon. After all of that, we finally killed the boss. Right after we killed him, I randomly DC five seconds later, and for some reason, there's no sack of gems for me. Ah, uh, that's bad. Oculus is horrible. It's easy, but it's horrible, because vehicles suck, at least in the way that they implemented them in Oculus. It's absolutely appalling. It doesn't help that I can't get the damn things to work properly with my bartender. That's why I don't take Oculus. If Oculus comes up, I will cancel it. I will leave. Because my bartender refuses to work properly with the damn buttons. It's freaking horrible. Easy, but horrible. I can't be asked clicking them. At the end of the day, I want to play a mage, not a damn drake. Right, let's see what else we've got here. Now, this is a quick one from uh, Iviego, the level 80 st Resto Druid on Storm Rage. He says this, Well, I've looked over your new site and bookmarked it immediately, though a few questions. Will you be changing your current live show schedules? No. Maybe. Blue Please will stay exactly where it is. Yeah. Because people seem to like it at that time slot. Gaming the system as of next week, as in there's one show and then the change, is moving to Sundays. Most likely at 5 p.m. GMT. That's midday Eastern Standard. The reason for that is that Swag has a new job and is as such unable to do the show at the other time because he's on minus eight, which I think is Pacific. So yeah, we'll be moving that one to Sundays, which. If all goes to plan, I'm not confirming this, will be a double bill with Octel and Hordak. Might be the case, might not, we're still working on that. Now, it goes on. On more than one occasion, I've noticed your hate for WoW and the urge to turn the topic to something else. So, can we expect new and different shows? I mostly ask because I'm 100% going to play Star Trek Online. I wonder if you'll tackle that as an MMO as well. Probably not, honestly. I will play it, but I doubt, don't think I'll do a show on it. It's just new games like that don't really suit my particular style of broadcasting. It would end up being a tutorial show. It's like, hey, it's a newbie show. I'm not into doing that kind of thing. I'm not into doing stuff like, say, The Instance does, where they appeal to this kind of demographic who are either new or pretty low level or just play really casually, and they talk about things that really, in the grand scheme of things, don't matter. That's fine for those who listen, but it's not my thing. So, I don't think I'm going to be doing that, but I would be playing STO, absolutely, it's a great game, from what I can tell. It's got some issues, but the space combat kicks the ass of World of Warcraft, honestly. And it's freaking Star Trek! If you don't like Star Trek, then you're no real nerd, that I can tell you for a fact. Alright, what else have we got? Many more, in fact, many more, so I better get on with it. Here's one. Uh, it's a little bit long, I think I'll maybe leave that one till later. Got one here. Greetings, Senor Biscuit. This is Yene, level 80 Draenei Priest on Argent Dawn EU. I would like to hear your thoughts about the new additions that have been recently made to the WoW Armory, mainly the character feed. Some players have expressed concerns about this addition that it would be a breach of privacy rights. <laughs> I don't think they know what privacy rights are. Since everyone can now see what you're doing online in regards to PvE, <gasps> they can stalk you online! Personally, I don't have too many issues with the addition, but I can see where the opinion is coming from. Your thoughts. Okay, so you'll remember that I think back in TBC when this was first put in the game, I raged against it because, to be honest, at the time, and I do still believe this to some degree, it's like, well, why isn't there an opt-out feature? That was my only issue with it. That said, there are uses for it, especially with achievement tracking and things like that. It's good to check out prospective guildies and things like that. I still believe that there should be an opt-out feature, but I don't believe that all of this extra stuff really makes too much difference. Like, saying, oh, well, let's just roll that back is closing the door of the stable after the horse has bolted. It's already, you know, it's already done and over with. It's not worth pursuing anymore. It's never going to change, honestly. The functionality right now is quite nice. I don't think that the whole, oh, well, you can see the PvE achievements is, is a big deal in any sense. And this is what I said to people on the forums as well. If you have a problem with it, then consider that some of us actually do get e-stalked. Like, really e-stalked. And then consider that your problems might not be so bad. Not that I'm saying that it has got to this point where I've really been bothered by it in terms of harassment. But yeah, some people do e-stalk and some people are a bit weird. 
It's just, it's the internet, you know? Some people do that. The vast majority are completely normal, but the, the, there is the occasional weirdo. Now, I'm not too bothered if said weirdo is looking at my armory feed and perhaps fapping into a paper cup. That's not something that bothers me. It's a little odd, but hey, whatever. Each to their own, whatever floats your boat and all that. But yeah, I, again, privacy rights? No. <laughs> it's not a, it, this is not a privacy rights issue. Don't make it out to be that. Because to be honest, that depreciates the real value of actual privacy issues. It's kind of annoying, yeah, but at this point, you've got to say, hey, they've added some cool new functionality as opposed to, oh my god, my rights! My privacy! Because again, horses bolted, left years ago. Nothing we can do about it. My name is Tall Biscuit. you are listening to Blue Please on WoW Radio. I will be right back after this, folks. Enjoy. <laughs> 